This is Her Standards with me, Queen Tambori. Thank you for joining us for yet another episode that celebrates women. Today we are coming to you from the curve situated along Mombasa Road and we have lined up an exciting show. We have an amazing guest who you will get to introduce in a short while. Now, um, she is an award-winning award media, media personality. She is a, an author. She is a gender equality advocate and much more. I don't want to finish everything because we have her in studio. Now, um, I'm talking about none other than Janet Mbugua. She doesn't need any introduction, but because we have her here, she'll definitely get that opportunity to introduce herself. Now, do you have any questions for her? Do you have a comment? Do you have, um, I don't know, feedback about the work that she is doing? I don't know. You, you know what to do? Just get onto our social media platforms across uh, the board. We are available as KTN Home or you can hit me up directly at Quintan Bori on Facebook, Queenie Bori on Instagram and Queenie Saina on Twitter. I'm also available as Quinta Bori on LinkedIn. Uh, now, Janet. Hi, Quinta. Hi. <laughs> nice to meet you in person. I know. We yeah. have just been doing this virtually. The new normal. In I this world. know. And thank you for always turning up for us. No, thank you. Thank <laughs> you for the work you do. I, I, a show that celebrates women. That's incredible. So thank you. Thank you so much. The last time I remember, we met when uh, we were on the other side. Okay. Same, same team. Yeah. yeah. We were on KTN uh, News. Yeah. And we were talking about um, Adol. Was it Adolescent Health and Rights? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, and you guys were amazing on that show. No, thank you. It's such an important <laughs> topic. I remember we were we were dialing in virtually in the studio. Yeah. yeah that's, that's when I met you. But yeah, that was, mm. that was exciting. I think you're doing amazing stuff. Thank you. Mm. Thank you so anyway, much. Anyway, anybody who wants to know Janet Mbugwa, I mean, the easiest way is just to go to Google. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Or, or my Instagram. Yeah. You know what's interesting? Because <laughs> somebody yesterday was saying when I Google, <clears throat> most of what props up is what you've posted. Oh. But there is also Inuadada Foundation normally comes up quite high and yeah. official JanetBuba.com is probably the best way mm. to read about me. Mm. It's my website. Um, I, I'll keep updating it, but it, I, I decided to do a website so that it's an easy way for people from any part of the world to get to know about the work I do because now I do quite a bit of work with you know, local, regional and global partners. So I said, let me do the website. So if you do want to know a little bit more about the work I do, my website is the best, mm. and my social media, especially for a few teeny weeny personal moments here and there, but yeah. mostly the projects I'm doing, the brands I'm partnering with um, on my Instagram and across my social media. Mm. That's, that's probably the best way to follow up with what I'm doing. Official Janet Wugwa on my Instagram especially, it's the platform I use the most. The most. But mm. since we have you in studio. Then, yeah, you're, like, okay, you're like beyond the oh, platform. Oh, yeah, you are here, yes. Yeah. So, I mean, who is Janet? Who is Janet? Who is Janet? Yeah. Wow. Well, in a nutshell, I think I describe myself as a media personality because yeah. that was my launch pad into all the work I do. I was a former news anchor. But I think once TV, always TV. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you feel that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in and out. I kind of collaborate on projects with TV and radio stations yeah. as and when, mm -hmm. but not full time mm -hmm. yet. I'll wait for my kids to be there. <laughs> um, I'm also very passionate about advocacy and, and gender rights because because of um, a story that I talked about years ago on TV on yeah. menstrual inequality, founded the Inuadada Foundation, and it's never left me. And I say that because sometimes this work can, it can burden your soul. Mm -hmm. But when it's a calling and when it's something that keeps you up at night, then you know it's what you were meant to do. Mm -hmm. And so I've reached a, a great relationship with my passion and the love of the work I do. So it's advocating for people who don't have a voice and platform the way we do but also giving them the tools to advocate for themselves because they know best their story, right? But yeah. we have the platform. So access to sanitary towels, access to information on menstrual health, access yeah. to information on psychosocial support for gender-based violence and youth advocacy. That's what the foundation does. I'm an author of my first time, mm -hmm. a book on storytelling to demystify um, periods and menstrual inequality. I'm a moderator and public speaker, most recently for the Generation Equality Forum, mm -hmm. which was great. It was a global forum, and yeah. I was, I think, one of the few Kenyan moderators to do that. Yeah. And um, yeah, I've got two beautiful sons who keep me up every day. <laughs> and, and I think they give me, they give me a lot of purpose. Can you imagine? Yeah. You can say that again. I think we can all identify with that. Yeah. yeah. There you go. They just do something. Exactly. To you. Yeah. But I like, I like the way you have rebranded. Mm -hmm. You know, from. Um, 
media personality, uh, news anchor, because uh, more often than not, actually, many people, they don't find it um, easy to transition from uh, being on air, you know, into impacting the community. I think what you're doing is amazing. And for the purposes of this show, we set standards. Yeah, high I think, yes, right? you set high standards. <laughs> Possibly you could tell us how you did that. It's, 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 it's a very difficult process for most media personalities. Mm. In fact, we have seen some of them go down, unfortunately, yeah. or others, you know, sink into depression because they cannot really understand what is happening the moment they go off air. So how did you do it? Yeah, mm. I, I like that you understand <laughs> how it can be, it can be difficult because you can imagine you've been on air, you're used to people recognizing you and seeing you. Yeah. And whether or not it sounds odd or pretentious, it is part and parcel of being an on-air personality. And it comes, those are the perks that come with it. So when you step back, yeah. you really have to be ready. You know, will people always remember my name? <laughs> will I still be able to? <laughs> it's hard. Yeah. It's a hard adjustment for anybody, I think, who is a personality. Um, so I think for me, it was an, a couple of things. Because I started in Wadada while I was still on TV, I was trying to find my way around the space of advocacy mm -hmm. and the uh, NGO mm -hmm. world, and I still had a lot of learning to do. So I was balancing the two. And so by the time I stepped back, and I always say um, it's, uh, it's more of see you later and not goodbye, because like I say, <laughs> I, I'm sure I'll find yeah. my way back. Yeah. I had already planned. It, it took me six months to, before I resigned. So I thought about it for quite a long time. I planned my finances. I, I briefed my family so that they're not shocked, and I really kind of um had this foresight yeah. of why i'm making this decision and of course people were like are you crazy yeah You're including myself time. yeah <laughs> like, I'm time. People yeah. Are, and i said but i'll be back i think sometimes you need to step back to step up you need to get mm -hmm. more seasoned mm -hmm. you need to learn yourself a little bit more you need to push yourself out of your comfort zone that was one of the reasons i did it but also because i really wanted to focus on the foundation and my young family I, kudos to all y'all who like are able to juggle everything. Mm -hmm. I just told myself, I don't know that that's who I am, so why don't I take a break and figure it out? But I had work lined up, so I, I didn't just wake up and resign. I had an endorsement with a, with a brand that I was still in a relationship with for like three more years. Oh. So I had a plan, which is important. Mm -hmm. If you have a family, mm -hmm. have a plan. Mm -hmm. Then how did I transition? I leaned into who I really am. The thing about these spaces is you can't, you have to be authentic. Because if you step out and say, now I'm going to launch an album, <laughs> and you're not a singer, <laughs> yeah. you know, is that what you want to do? Are you doing yeah. it for clout, yeah. or are you doing it because you really want to do it? If you really want to go up and do a, be a singer, yeah. do it. But I said, I'm going to lean into who I really am, and I realized that impact and purpose kept me up at night. It mm -hmm. Literally, I would think about the girls and women I've met, yeah. I think about their families, and it, I think it, it triggered me every day to want to do something. So in my own little way, I found the rhythm to engage with different communities, to engage with different people. And over time, without me knowing it, pe certain people were watching, certain people were saying, oh, we've seen what you're doing, can we collaborate? And so now as I sit here, I'm like, it's because I was being real. Mm -hmm. I wasn't trying to, and it's not an easy journey. Mm -hmm. Advocacy space is not an easy journey. It's, um, you, you can't navigate it because people's lives depend on, on it. Yeah. So I think that's how I managed to, and then social media. Instagram changed my life. Mm. Social so tell media. Tell me about it. I mean, when you just think about the fact that yesterday I was in a mall and a pretty young person came up yeah. and they were like, hi Janet, you know, can we take a picture? And I was like, wait, tell me. So I love doing this thing mm. where I'm like, how old are you? <laughs> So she said she's 21, and yeah. I said, wow, because yeah. usually if it's people who are a little older, I know they watch me on TV. Yeah. Yeah. But now when you have all these younger people and yeah. they're saying um, Instagram yeah. or social media, yeah. that's where people are. Oh. So they balance between mainstream but mm -hmm. social. Mm -hmm. So when I got off TV, I extended a lot of the things I would say on do and do onto my social media, again, without knowing that I was opening up opportunities because a lot of people were going digital. So when I say it changed my life, literally, I got work because of... Um, mostly Instagram. Social media, yes, but largely Instagram. I got to collaborate with other civil society organizations around the world, whether it was the UK or the US, because of social media. I was doing events because of social media, because how else would somebody in New York know about me yeah. through social media? Yeah. So in many ways, it opened up so many doors for me, and I'm just glad I was consistently on it mm. and you know now there's, there's there's no going back so social media was also helpful in allowing me to still 
transition and tell my stories and work and collaborate mm -hmm. and still have people at least appreciate and recognize the work I'm doing. A mm -hmm. lot of it was social media. Very nice. Yeah. So it's all about planning, being authentic to yourself, yeah. leaning into your purpose. Yeah. And of course, being visible. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay, friends. So like, that's exactly what it is. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I try to be a good listener sometimes. <laughs> you, you are a good listener. You captured that well. Very nice. Yeah. What do you miss about being on air? Or do you miss being on air? Like, of mm -hmm. course, sometimes I know you do a lot of collaborations, and somehow you still find yourself in front of, <laughs> behind the cameras. So, what is it that you miss about being on air, like on a day-to-day -day basis? That's a good question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I... Oh, you, do you even miss being on air? <laughs> Some days, but most of the time, not really. Mm -hmm. I think because I trusted the decision I made and yeah. I said what I'll do is go back in little by little, which I've been doing. I recently did a six-week collaboration with a certain TV station. Um, so I kind of do it on, I would say, on, on, on my terms, I guess yeah. one would say. Yeah. Um, do I miss the adrenaline of mm -hmm. the newsroom mm -hmm. and the stories? Rarely. Really? It still will always be a part of me. It will always be, it's really what also allowed me the platform to do everything I do. But when I think about how hectic it was, yeah. I was, I just think to myself, not yet. Mm -hmm. I truly believe I'll go back at some point. Right now with two little kids and trying to, you know, growing my foundation, all the work, I think about it and I get, I, I just tell myself, no, you don't really miss it. Yes, you miss some of your colleagues and you miss the stories and the breaking news and the prep yeah. and everything. Mm -hmm. But I think right now, in and out, I like. You like. And then eventually, mm -hmm. I think I'll want to go back in, mm -hmm. um, maybe for something weekly, and just kind of feel that I, I like the show prep. I saw what you were doing with Grace <laughs> and the team. Yeah, yeah. Just the show prep and yeah. the briefings yeah. and the and it coming together and coming to life, that's yeah. a, it's a beautiful process. Yeah. I miss that somewhat, mm -hmm. but not, not to the point where I, it, it, it bugs me. Mm -hmm. Like, it, when I'm ready, When you're I'll ready, go back. on your terms. On my terms. Do you think media girls or media personalities are judged harshly by society? Yeah. Oh, is that a leading question? <laughs> <laughs> How are they judged, in your opinion? <laughs> okay. Yeah. I like they're like, mm, let me. Yeah. No, I think, I think we are. I think women... I have these conversations almost every day. Yeah. You know, yesterday I was talking to a young man who was saying, you know, when you guys say gender equality, mm -hmm. we hear women. <clears throat> you know, it almost sounds like us versus them. And I said, it's maybe you're not listening then. Because if you think about it, when we're talking about advancing rights, 26 years ago, because this year was 26 years, years since the Generation Equality yeah. Forum. So 26 years ago, when women went to Beijing, mm -hmm. there were no laws in Kenya yeah. that addressed gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. A lot of girls were not in school. True. A lot of women were not working. And it was normal. Yeah. If you were doing it, you were different. Mm -hmm. So I was telling him, think about the fact that 26 years ago, yeah. there were so many bird, um, barriers. Mm -hmm. So when you see us trying to advance that, we're not saying, let girls go and boys not. We're saying, let the girls also have a chance. Yeah. And we're also not saying put any woman in office. No, mm -hmm. put a good woman, mm -hmm. put a woman who knows. Mm -hmm. And if it's a man who's better for that role, put him there as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. But in terms of being judged, yeah. It's still there. In fact, right now we're at a very weird time where it's very it's a very polarizing conversation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You just have to look at Twitter to realize sometimes the anger and resentment towards women. Mm -hmm. And it's quite sad. I think when you're in a patriarchal society, yeah. people want you to be quiet. Mm -hmm. So when you talk, they're like, why are you talking? Like, who gave you <laughs> the right to talk? And because for them, what they know is, mm -hmm. She's to be seen, uh -huh. not to be heard, because uh -huh. that's how a lot of them grew up. So they've carried that forward uh -huh. without realizing a lot of men and women are uh -huh. fighting that. They're now saying, if Quinta has something to say, let her say it. Not, Quinta is a woman, so she shouldn't say anything. So we are judged harshly. I used to see it when I was a news anchor, yeah. when I was pregnant. Yeah. Oh. Uh -huh. When I was pregnant with my firstborn yeah. and I was wearing my dresses yeah. on, 90% yeah. yeah. of the comments would be condemning me. How can you be pregnant and on and, TV? Uh, yeah. Go back home. Why? Because yeah. the space is small. You can't fit into, into the camera. <laughs> and so it's that thing for, we don't want to see. Just, you know, it's, it's, it's trying to reconcile. So we're judged harshly. Yeah. You're told, you're just a pretty face. You don't know what you're saying. You're told, oh my gosh, what is that dress? I'm like, are you listening to me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. So we, you have to bring your best self. And as a woman, you still have to step up more than your male counterpart because uh, the world we it's, live it's in. A world, it's unfair. It's, it's, a, a, it's, it's changing. Yeah, it's changing, but it's still there. But yeah. it's 
there's a lot more men who are now saying, come on, mm. can we just give them give a chance, them a which chance. is good. Yeah. Good stuff. Mm. You know, talking of diversity and inclusion of women in media, uh, one of the reasons actually media is considered uh, an environment that doesn't su support or promote gender equality is because of uh, the age factor of women who go on air. Okay, mm. because they say that when you hit a certain age, you are immediately sent behind the scenes. Now you become a producer or you become yeah. something else, but you, 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 you vacate mm. the screen, which to me I think is unfair because mm. uh, does it mean that we cannot have senior journalists or senior media personalities who can still be news anchors and, 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 and uh, mm -hmm. people who read news? Do you think uh, it's about time we change that perception that we consider women for who they are, not how old or mm. how they look? Yeah, no, mm. it's such an important question because it's an unfortunate reality. <laughs> In many industries, yeah. there's like a shelf life. So you reach a certain age and they're hinting to you, oh, you don't want to grow in another direction. <laughs> but if you have the ability, you can yeah. fight for yourself mm. and hopefully certain spaces will fight with you. Mm. Um, I think women, even those going into media, those who are new in media, they really need to arm themselves with the knowledge of the work they're doing. Because cool. you know, nobody can take that away from you. Mm -hmm. So when I was getting into TV, I was quite young. I think yeah. I was 22 yeah, you were young. and I wanted to do a travel show. Yeah. So I remember when the producer was, con he, he was already like, I want to work with you. I have to convince the board. <laughs> and he was saying the board looked at my tape and they said, how old is this girl? She looks like she's just come out of school. Yeah. and. He had to say, dude, that's ageism, just let yeah, her. Yeah. And so I told him, because I really fought for my space, and yeah. I said, tell them mm. to let me work. And if they don't like what I'm doing, I'll step back. Yeah. And so I pushed myself. Then after the travel show, when I was being invited to go to the newsroom, yeah. imposter syndrome took over. <laughs> I said, I'm 23. Yeah. What am I saying yeah. to Kenyans about the news <laughs> at 23? But people fought with me and for me and gave me the confidence. But I remember my former boss telling me, nobody can take away your skill set mm. and nobody can take away what you bring to the table. So just always be informed about issues around you. Mm. And I took that seriously so that even when they want to say you need to step aside, it's hard for them because mm. you are good at your content. Exactly. So I always tell people it's not about the glitz and glam and the intern looking all good, uh -huh. which you do, you yeah. really good. Oh, thank you. And, that, and that's a plus, it's yeah. image. So it's yeah. okay to come looking beautiful and dressing well. Mm. But when people would say, oh my gosh, I want to be an anchor like you, I'm like, why? Mm -hmm. For the celebrity, because mm -hmm. that's going to die. Yeah. Do you have content. the content? Yeah. yeah, so women are judged harshly, and I think sometimes they're not supported. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's surround them mm -hmm. and remind them that it's also about what you bring to the table yes. and not just about your dress. Yeah, so I think it's, it's, a, it's a good thing that uh, Catherine Casavulli is back. I guess yeah. the message is loud and clear. There you go. Yeah, yeah <laughs> she, she carved out, a, we used to watch her. Yeah. I used to watch guys. It's, it's so surreal, <laughs> you know, when I was with her that yeah, night. And yeah. I'm like, I genuinely used to watch you when oh. I was really young. So it's nice to celebrate the fact that imagine all those years of experience that she's bringing. Bring yeah, it's, it's incredible. Yeah. Interesting. Even abroad, Quinta, you'll see yeah. so many seasoned journalists. Mm -hmm. Abroad, you're actually more likely to be in the newsroom if you're older. A By lot the of way. them. By the it's way. a mix, mm -hmm. but there's anchors who've been doing it for 30 years, mm -hmm. presenters who've been doing it for 35 years. Yeah. So seasoned is also important it's also important yeah yeah you know you said something about bringing the skills to the table mm -hmm. and uh, what many people might be surprised to find out is that you actually covered you know, sports <laughs> <laughs> did, didn't I? you did the world cup yes i did do you remember time. let me take you back i'm like oh yeah uh, that was 2010 <laughs> Yes. Good stuff. Yeah. I am being told that we have to take a break. Okay. Imagine, time has, has flown. This is her standards. <laughs> and if you're just joining us, we have been joined by Janet Mbugwa, uh, an award-winning media personality season. And now she has transitioned into advocacy. She's very passionate about gender equality, menstrual equality, and so much more. We want to take a short break because when we come back, we will talk about some of the advocacy work that she is doing. Do not go away. <laughs> 